Welcome, I'm Bill Sheehy, owner and director of Latin American Masters here in Santa Monica, California. We're honored to have with us Fernando de Sislo, the great Peruvian modernist. Fernando, welcome to the gallery. Thank you, Bill. I am always glad to be Thank you. at your gallery. Thank you, it's an honor to have you. Fernando de Sislo, uh, for those of you who may not be aware, is uh, one of the real pioneers of Latin American art and really one of a handful of the great modernists to come out of Latin America. Uh, he pioneered uh, aspects of um, abstraction in the post-World War era that arguably, um, uh, he's in a very, very small group of uh, painters that include Roberto Mata, and uh, you can argue about who else might be included in that group, but he's in a very rarefied company. Um, we have a show opening from Maestro Sislo that'll uh, run for a couple of months. Hopefully some of you will have a chance to see it. If not, please go to our website where you can see some of the Maestro Sislo's uh, imagery. Fernando, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the relationship between uh, European modernism uh, and uh, the ancestral forms, the ancient art that inspired uh, many of the modern artists. And I think that this is particularly relevant uh, with respect to your work because you are one of those artists, like Rufino Tamayo from Mexico, who have uh, forged a very strong connection between the uh, European avant-garde and uh, the ancient forms of uh, the Americas, uh, coming from Peru with its very, very ancient pre-Hispanic uh, traditions. Um, could you speak a little bit about this uh, what would seem to the general public this strange combination of the modern and the ancient? Yes, you know, the, the relation between modern art and primitive art is old already. I mean, it began at the beginning of the 20th century when Derain, Flamand, those uh, phobist painters uh, start collecting Negro art, art from Africa. And they contacted Matisse, Matisse uh, Picasso saw them at, at Matisse's studio, become very interested. Uh, it comes a, a period of Picasso painting that is called uh, Negro. No, the the Negro period of Picasso, but uh, Picasso was very, very, how you say, he, he, reluctant. He didn't like uh, the people that attribute uh, to 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 African art what he had found. He has developed what he had found in African art into modern painting, no? He, he, it, he, he did not, it wasn't that he was trying to disrespect the African culture, no. but he wanted people to understand that, um, that although um, he had other sources of inspiration, in this case yes. Africa, that there was this very personal invention going of on. Course. Of course, of course, you know the, uh, the Czech poet Rainer Maria Rilke once was asked uh, what takes to make a poem and Rilke said it takes to have suffered, to have been very happy, to have to have uh, to have seen uh, baby borns and people die, etc. And then all this forget, forget everything. So it comes uh, part of your blood, mm. and they come out of your uh, work, uh, being you are you are personal properties. No, in my case it, it, it happened that way, but it must say it also that in difference that uh, uh, European artists. The, uh, painter, Latin American painters like Tamayo or me or some uh, don't 
In particular, me that I am. A, I was born in Lima. Never went out of Lima till I, till I was 24. So I have never seen a Rembrandt, never seen a Van Gogh until I went to the Louvre. So I have I had been used to see the Meninas of Velázquez uh, in the same dimension of uh, Paul Klee. <laughs> Paul Klee made the small paintings like the Meninas I used to see. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only real original art that was at my site was pre-Columbian art. And you were already exposed to that? As oh yes, man. very much. I started collecting some things that are in my house in this moment. Really? I get when I, I bought when I was 20. Wow. And it cost nothing, nothing. Really. But there wasn't any respect, I would no, say, generally. But don't. you felt a, an attraction to this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But I, I suppose through my interest in modern art, no, my interest in Picasso. And so Mark. you were already interested in modern art at yes. the time you were looking at pre-Columbian art? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and, and at that point, had you made the connection between those uh, ancient um, artifacts of these ancient cultures from Peru with modern art? Was it all of, what, were you thinking that this, these are both art? Yes, no, you know, it was not that, uh, that uh, conscious, that uh, rational. Uh, it was, uh, we discovered that the pretty people, uh, the, the result, the art that resulted was not uh, an evolution of form, but evolution of content. Uh, I mean, the content was everything, and the content was the one who gave the form its shape. It was not a, like a Botticelli, like he painted a birch and put the things inside. A, a modern artist tried to uh, brought out all the things that he felt, but not disguising it as anything else, but as, as feelings. So the, the, the form is the the result of a very powerful content, no? So for me, it was a discovery, really. Uh, I must say that the work of Tamayo helped me a lot because I discovered Tamayo when Tamayo, I was 22, 20, when Tamayo was already a big painter. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the chance to go to Paris in 1949, and I met Tamayo. I already knew very well his work, but I met him in 1949. Now, Tamayo uh, was 26 years older than you, so he was really from a, quite a, a couple of generations older than older, you. Older, yes, yes. And, uh, you uh, were aware of his work, but you actually met him in Europe in the late 40s. In the late and 40s. when you saw his work, did it, um, was it, uh, was it, a, was it, a, did you find that it was a re, did you find in his, in his dialogue with the primitive and the modern, uh, a reaffirmation of a, of a journey that you were already on? Did he open up a road for you, or was this a road that you were already on and you said, oh my gosh, there's someone else that's on it also? Uh, no, uh, I think both things are true. I mean, he opened a mm -hmm. road for me, but at the same time, you know, when, when you, were very, you are very young um, and uh, starting to paint as, as I was, everything happens very quickly. So I, some two months, I, I was very involved in the, the, the in paintings that are very similar to Tamayo. But it didn't last. The, the 
abstract movement in Paris was very powerful, and I was taken back. You, you were very, you got very drawn into the abstract movement in Paris. Oh, yes. Yes, Soulage and Manissier, Hartung, Hartung, who right. was the painters that I met and I, I like it. And, and you can still feel some of that gestural power from that period in your work of today. Yes, yes, oh yes. But I want to ask you something. When you talked about the content in the ancient art and the way in which the object was an expression of that content, as opposed to a modern artist uh, arriving at the uh, painting through an exploration of feeling, yes. did you reach a point where you understood that content? Did you understand that it was, because I would think that would, unless you were born in the Chiang Kai culture yes. or Mochica <laughs> culture yes. thousands of years ago, Yes. That it would remain rem mysterious to oh, you. Oh yes, uh, but uh, alien also, alien. So, alien. but 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 you don't. Even though you don't know the specifics of that content, no. you understand the content as being essentially of a sacred or spiritual nature. Yes. And that this was an expression sacred, not of the aesthetic, but of sacred, violent. That that was the things that impressed me about the. Prehispanic pre culture, no? I, I, I mean, I have thought a lot of that, and I, I arrived to the conclusion that we, what we are doing now is desacralize everything, not only painting. Painting was an act of the magic, no? And now, not only painting, love, our interest in women right. uh, is completely different. I mean, for me, uh, when I was 20, uh, a woman was a, a mysterious yeah. thing, yes. something that was very far and very, very deep. And now it's for a young man of 20, it's nothing, I mean, it's something you, you make love with and then forget. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the whole, the, the whole civilization we are on, the whole art we are producing, is desacralized. Yes. There is nothing. It's a, it's a, it's a ludic. It's a game. Uh, there is nothing bloody, violent, uh, uh, mysterious, sacred uh, uh, about it. Why is that? Why do you think no, that is? I think, I think civilization go mm. in that way, no? You, you remember the painting that was done during the times of Louis XIV, Fragonard, Boucher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The painting was nothing. I mean, no, it was sort of like, that's interesting. That's yeah. an interesting analogy. Yeah. It's a more of an academic tradition, all about surface. Yes, surface. No inner life. Nothing, nothing Which is inside. a lot of what we have now. Well, exactly. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. I mean, I, I'm, we, don't, we want to, to shock people, and people are already over that. Yeah. They don't care. 